G'day everyone, today we're talking about Obsidian. It's the note-taking app that seems to have taken the world by storm. It's a little bit different to some of those other ones like uh, Evernote or Notion or even Rome, uh, but it's the one that I'm currently using. It's the one that I'm currently getting the most out of by following the Zettelkasten method. So just as a little get started, I thought we could go through the basics. This is a actual demo. So here we go. So first things first, note taking is a thing that we're all just kind of told to do. You know, write something down was something that came up as part of our, you know, uh, school career but the actual function of taking notes is never actually taught to us in any great detail but I'm now at the point where I've been working for as long as I went to school for and I'm only just discovering that there's a better way to take notes and I hope that in this series that maybe we can develop some great note taking habits together so which tool should I use well for me I will focus mostly on obsidian but you can apply some of these uh, note taking strategies to other tools some of the other tools are stuff like notion Rome research OneNote, and Evernote they're all pretty big famous ones um, but again we will be focusing on obsidian MD so to to start with let's uh, let's download the, the app let's go first go into your Google and uh, type in hey HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash obsidian dot MD. Once there, there'll be a giant get obsidian for Windows or it will detect your uh, operating system and actually pick the correct one for you. But you can choose more platforms if you wanted to download it for a different platform. Once there, click the installer and follow through the bouncing ball to install it where you like and then move through the steps of creating your first vault. So this is obsidian. It's a blank canvas at this stage. But if you click on the create new note in the middle, it will create your first note. You can see on the left hand sidebar, it's populated my first note. The top line of the file is the folder name, or sorry, the top line of the file is the file name. You can use three horizontal dashes to create a horizontal rule. And then there's the hashtag to create headings, which is the markdown syntax. So you can go between one and six get to heading one through to heading six. You then have the syntax for italics, bolds and bold italics. That's usually marked by a number of asterisks. So you would go one asterisk on either side of the word to make it italic, two to make it bold and three to make it bold and italic. You can then also use two tildes to create a strike through effect. That is two tildes, they're the same button as the back tick. You can also use two equal symbols to highlight some text. If you use a hyphen, you can create a dot point. If you create a numbered list with just entering the first number that you want to go with, so one dot and then a space, and that will create a numbered list. You can also create to-do list items with a checkbox. If you push in a hyphen, a left square bracket, a space, and a right square bracket, I have that bound in my Obsidian hotkeys to control and enter. And that will toggle through all three of the, the states, which is bullet point, to-do list, and marked to-do list. We also still have tags in this one, so you can tag your documents with a hashtag and whatever name that you would like to tag it with. And then we get to the fun part with the links. So for this first one, I'm creating a mask for obsidian.md and then I'm putting the URL to the obsidian website in the columns. You can see, you can see, sorry, that was inside the brackets. You can see that that uh, goes away or hides, but it turns that initial text into a link. Now the second one is two square brackets. This will create a link to another note. Now you see that we don't actually have that note on the left there, but when we click it, it actually creates a brand new note that's linked to the original note. So on the right hand pane here, we can see unlinked mentions and linked mentions. So we can see the other notes that are linked back to this note. We can drag that, click and drag that onto our canvas here to actually drop a link to the original note in there. Now the other powerful function inside Obsidian is the command palette. You get here by pressing Control and P, which will open a navigation bar with innumerable numbers of options in here. From here, you can type in any number of things and it will sort or search through the options in the command palette for you to be able to do stuff with it. One of the other cool highlighting or text functions you can do is called a call out. You can do this from the command palette. You can also enter in the text yourself. These call outs do truly stand out. They have a heading bar and a, a note within. The bit where it says exclamation mark note in the square brackets at the beginning, I believe, controls the image. And there should be some other ones around that you can use to change what that call out is actually referring to. Now let's link back to our first note here, but we're gonna give this one a mask this time. 
So what we do is we put a pipe at the end of the link and then we type in the text that we'd like it to display. You can see here that it changed back to what we, we put after the pipe. Now the other function we can do is exploding notes. If you put an exclamation mark in front of any note, it will explode all of the information that's in that note into the existing note you have. This is powerful because you know where you have the, the first note referenced, you can edit only the first note and it will update in the second note. Another thing we can do is create a bookmark or a shortcut to a specific note inside another note. What you do is you type in the link to the note that you're trying to get the, the information out of and you put a little carrot, which is your shift six key, and then it will pop up a list where you can pull down the information that's inside that note so you can go to a specific section. And this can be used in combination with the explode function so you can pull the information out from there. Now, another thing you can do is actually find that tag in the original note and edit that to something that's a little more friendly. So you can talk about where that link has come from, or where it went. You can see it's unable to find the section here, but we can update this tag here to whatever you like. You can also preemptively add those carrots in there if you think you're going to call back to that note in particular at any given point. Now here's the graph view. You can see that we have three different notes all noted for ourselves and our, our wonderful consumption here. See, they're all linked to each other. Now, if you press the settings and go to the core plugins, these are all of the plugins that are installed with Obsidian by default. Activate them or turn them off as much as you want. I'm a big fan of the Vim key bindings. The other one is the files tab. I do recommend having that one turned on and creating a folder specifically for files, any files that you paste in just to keep it nice and neat. What you can do from here is create a folder called my first files folder in this instance, and then right click it and set it as your default attachment. The normal behavior is that we'll take a screenshot of it or, or paste an image or something in there and it will drop it into the root of the directory. But when you drop it into a new folder, Obsidian automatically updates that it's gone to a new location for you. But what you can do after that is, is set a default attachment folder. So any of your pasting will automatically go into the, the files mm. folder for any screenshot. You can also rename it on the fly inside the note or in the left-hand Explorer menu there and it will update all reference to links to that. Now, if you click on any tag in the body of any note, it will search for any of those tags there. The shortcut to get to the search menu is Control F or Control Shift F. Control Shift F will alert, search through all notes. Control F will search through the note that you're in. Now, as you can see here, when we add another tag, it adds another search result, makes sense. Finally, we have the Obsidian Canvas. This is a relatively new feature. But what we can do with the canvas is click and drag notes onto our infinite canvas, which is like a big tabletop where we can create links and arrows and drag our notes on here and cards to describe what's going on and images and that kind of thing. And you can really create a true mind map in this sense. It's also good for visualizing flows and uh, if you're if you're trying to write something of significance. So, you know, if you've got a bunch of ideas around um, cyberbullying, for example, you could use a canvas to work out the flow of a written blog to, to come up with how that, that works or looks. Now, these cards don't actually generate a note themselves, but they are able to be turned into a note after the fact. And as you can see, you can point arrows into the other notes so that you can link them all together. You can see as well that we're pulling in our notes from the, the earlier exercises where we created them all together. And we're also putting in our images and linking those together. Create two-way arrows or two-way links if you deem that necessary. And there are four anchors around each note to hook them into. As you can see, it's got a little bit of a grid to try and help you snap them all together and um, demonstrating another one of the anchors that you pick and resize the notes on the fly as well. And you can also scroll through them as you're working through. Very, very cool. Okay, and that's it for our fundamentals of Obsidian right now. Um, if you check out my blog that's linked down below, I have more in-depth detail about all of the markdown commands that you can do. And I hope you truly get some value out of this like I enjoy using obsidian I'm now doing the settle casting or the second brain method and it's it's really helping with stuff like idea emergence and uh, making those connections capturing those shower thoughts those good ideas um, as a you know strange one that popped into my head the other day was I actually invented an ISMS platform um, just you know using something like a tool um, similar to obsidian to, to be able to like work through with templates and that kind of thing it's it's irrelevant the product already exists but you know it was something that popped into my head that it was like oh we could do something like that and so you sort of you get these ideas and you, you come up with them and you're able to follow them through and that's just by noting them down at the time that they appear in your head well thanks again for tuning in today appreciate your time and we'll catch you in the next one